Good morning, Year 12s. Thanks for coming along, guys. So today's lesson is Halogen's Lesson 2. Um, and we're doing the reactions with concentrated sulfuric acid. In the previous lesson, we talked about the chemical test for the halogens. Uh, I, the one thing I would like to also add to probably today's lesson is going to be the displacement reactions. I think I talked about one displacement reaction, um, but I, I would like to do another as well, just because they're very, very, very common questions at A level. And so I, I'll try and rope some of those in into today's lesson as well. But it is technically GCSE, so I'm going to move on. Uh, right, let's share screen and crack on. I'm just going to quickly sort out the. This is the, the most poorly designed tables I've ever seen in my entire life. But why would they do this? Right, let's go for this one. There we go. Right. So, by the way, just so you know, because I've got Sian there, got Didney there. Didney's Russell, isn't it? Um, I just to let those people know who are on the YouTube video, because I have uh, Marcellus, Oliver, and Winkit in the class, I cannot see the chat. So there's no point in asking questions on the chat uh, because I won't respond to it. Sian has suffered from that over the last couple of lessons. So okay, let's let's crack on, folks. So today's lesson. Let's bring that over to there. Zoom in. Here are my learning objectives. So I'll switch my tablet now to tablet mode. Okay, we're there. So concentrated sulfuric acid. So the three learning objectives that we need to work through today. Oh, is it frozen? What's frozen? Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So three learning objectives. Number one, know your observations. Number two is understand the redox behavior. And then the last one is be able to balance equations. And like I said, I've pulled an exam question here, which is a great one for doing group seven with consulfuric. So, and we'll see that it has the hardest balance equation I've ever seen. It's really, and I'll show you how it's done, but it's really tough. Okay, so the first thing I need to talk to you guys about is about these reactions. So I will actually do these reactions at some stage. As I said, unfortunately, my bottles of conch acid have all had their labels eaten. So I'm not sure which one's which, and I don't want to start throwing stuff into conch acids if I don't know what they are. So here's how the procedure happens. So we already know, we already understand that we can test for these guys. We can already test for these guys with dilute nitric, with dill nitric acid, followed by, this is just a recap from the last lesson, followed by silver nitrate solution, silver nitrate aqueous, yeah, and we then see three colors. We see a white precipitate, we see a cream precipitate, and we see a yellow precipitate. We can then confirm this, we can confirm this with dilute ammonia, dill ammonia, and the white one will vanish. The others have no change. Then we add conch sulfuric, sorry, damn it, conch ammonia, and that one, the, yet the cream now vanishes and the yellow never disappears. We've learned that already from last lesson. Now, there are other reactions you can do with these halides to give us an idea of their behaviors in terms of their ability. So what we can do is subtitle. Uh, halide, halide reducing power. Okay, so halide reducing power. So we know we've already been, we've been seeing certain things at GCSE. So the first note to Bene is halogens Halogens, I just quickly want to check that the chat's working. Yeah, that's okay. So halogens are oxidizing, oxidizing agents. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, Oliver, in terms of electrons, what's happening to an oxidizing agent? Do you 
is absolutely correct. Well done. If you call it a stupid diagram, I'll kick you out of the class because it's amazing. It's one of the best diagrams I've ever invented. So oxidizing agents gain electrons. Halogens are oxidizing agents. So we can then say fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are now oxy agents. Um, Marcellus, which one is the most powerful oxy agent? Is the right answer, well done. Most powerful. It can take electrons from noble gases. That's how insane an oxidizing agent fluorine is. We now know that they decrease. This is then the least. Oh, let's change my size of my pen. Least powerful. Cool. So, and this helps with the displacement reactions, understanding which one's more powerful than the other one's going to oxidize. So in a display, this is where I said in my, the start of the lesson, I wanted to try and include some displacements. So sodium bromide reacting with chlorine, becoming sodium chloride and bromine. The reason for this reaction is that chlorine, chlorine, you say at GCSE, is more reactive, is more reactive than bromine. But we can now also add to this, chlorine is a more, is a more powerful, a more powerful oxy agent than bromine. We can do that now as well. So it's going to take the electrons. We know oxidizing agents take electrons. And then we can compare this in an ionic equation. The Br minus reacts with chlorine. The chlorine steals the electrons to become chloride and the bromide becomes bromine. And we can then do this, tie this up with redox. So we can then say, right, so that one, uh, whoops, don't go that from there to there. We're starting with minus one on the ladder and we're coming up. Yeah, that's being oxidized. There's the ox. Yeah, and the chlorine to chlorine is going from zero to minus, that's being reduced. There's my red. So, okay with everybody? Yeah, fine, cool. So, what we, but the problem is with these, it's great to be able to rank them against each other. But what we'd like to do is have a slightly better understanding of their strength in terms of oxidizing power. So, in order, so reaction, reaction with conch sulfuric. And by the way, just to explain the concentrated bit, the word concentrated, Oliver, what makes concentrated acid special? This, you, you keep hearing this term. I keep, like chemists say this every now and again, oh, this is a conch acid. And students never really ask, oh, so why is it conch? What's special about conch? It's just, it's more concentrated than the Oh, it's not just more concentrated. This is as concentrated as it gets. If someone says conch acid, then you go, so this is maxed out. This is no water at all. It's actually just, it's less than 0.5% or no water at all. That's actually the better way of looking at it. Conch acid means pure acid, yeah, no underline, no water, yeah, no water at all. Now this is important. The reason why is because of GCSE. At GCSE, you learnt, at IGCSE, at GCSE, you learnt an acid is not an acid unless, unless it's in water. Yeah, that's what you learn at GCSE. Yeah, an acid is not 
an acid unless in water. And then, of course, you say why. And I'm going to ask uh, Winkit why. What happens to an acid when you put it in water? Donates. Donating to who? Which agent? No. Oliver? Keep, get, not, you haven't said the word. Marcellus, give me the word. I taught you a GCSE, Marcellus. Come on. What do they do in water? Thank you. They dissociate. We know, unless it's in water, acids, acids dissociate or ionize, whichever one you prefer, ionize in water. And we wrote this equation. We then wrote down this, Marcellus remembers us doing this. Sulfuric acid is a liquid. It's a sticky, thick liquid. We now put it into water, we get add to water, and what happens is I get this. I now form these two ions. They dissociate. No water, no dissociation, which means you have no H+. Now this is important. In this setting, it's vital. The reason being, Let's imagine a scenario. Let's imagine I take my H2SO4 and I add it to water. It now forms this. Right. Now that it's dissociated in water, I'm now going to add to it sodium, sodium chloride. What's the sodium chloride going to do in solution? It's going to dissociate. We know that ionic compounds, when they dissolve, they break up. Let's have a look at that as an animation. Yeah, we know that when an ionic compound goes into water, they break apart into their ions. Um, dis um, what's the difference? Um, dissolving is this. So, okay, the problem is you're, you're talking about two different parts of the molecule, uh, substances here. One's ionic. I want covalent. So dissociating involves the breaking of a covalent bond. Whereas dissolving, usually like in ionics, it's breaking of the ionic bonds, uh, electrostatic attractions in the lattice. Um, but dissolving of something like sugar is you're breaking the weak intellectual forces between the molecules and then forming bonds with the water. So dissolving is the process. This is dissolving is this process. Yeah, I'll fast forward it. That's dissolving. The, the particles, there is no chemical change here. Dissolving is a physical process. Things are being separated into tiny pieces so you can't see them, but there's no chemical reaction. Yeah? So that's, by the way, that was a covalent compound. Let's look at an ionic. Yeah, same thing. The water's pulling it apart. Yeah? Now, if you look at this and we add in salt now to here, look what now happens. I now form these guys. And what you realize is those ions are not going to react with each other. Would you agree that the H pluses aren't going to react with the NA pluses? What are they going to do? They're going to repel, like George's repel. So you can go, oh, but the H plus might join with the CL minus. What would that form? HCl, hydrochloric acid, what does hydrochloric acid do in water? Dissociate, which means it's not actually doing anything. The, the Na pluses could go with the sulfate ion and form sodium sulfate. Oh, but what's that going to do in water? It's going to dissolve and dissociate. So in fact, the reaction doesn't do anything. You can't do a reaction with the halide ions in water because the ions don't interact. If we want to see an interaction of particles, we need no water. So conch is no water. So what that means is, what does the sulfuric acid now look like? Can everyone now draw this for me, please? It now looks like this. 
when you write um, a QR code for an annotation and there are some state symbols, what do you put? Um, it depends on the question. If it's concentrated, it's a liquid. If it's an acid, then it's aqueous. If you ever have the word acid, it's aqueous. It's got to be. Unless you see the word conch. So is it a concentrated acid? Concentrated acid. So concentrated um, hydrochloric acid is a gas. Hydrogen chloride. You've seen this when you've done, yeah, hydrogen chloride gas. You can't call it hydrochloric acid because it's not, it's a gas. Both nitric and sulfuric are both liquids at room temperature because they're larger, stronger uh, in uh, hydrogen bonding between the molecules, technically. Yes? Yeah. So here's sulfuric acid, guys. I hate to say it, you've got to know that guy. You have to know that structure. You've got to be able to draw it because you're going to need it when you do electrophilic addition of alkenes with sulfuric acid. You're going to need it. The next question is, so I'm just going to then go, so I'll write the thing next to it as well. Just to show you, by the way, just to show you others, here's, here's nitric acid. This is an extension. This is me doing this because of organic. Nitric acid. Hey, add this to your notes as well. Oh, oh, nitric acid looks like this. There's nitric acid. Yeah. You guys should all be able to do the dot and cross for these, yes? Sure. If I hadn't drawn that for you, you wouldn't have been able to draw that, would you? No, you see, you should be able to do that. They, should, they, you, they can give you just the formula and say, draw the dot and cross. What you have to do is to draw a dot and cross diagram. Step number one, Oliver, what is the oxidation state of the nitrogen? Really? You're going to do that with the calculator? Okay. I'm happy for you to do it. You know, it's good for you to do it. I like it. Well done. That tells me it's making five bonds. So I can now go, right, so I've got nitrogen at the center, two oxygens bound to it, three oxygens, right, that's one bond, two bonds, three bonds, four bonds, five bonds. There are my two oxygens. Yeah, and then the hydrogen is tacked onto the end to give that one a full outer shell. Please watch my video on dot and cross diagrams and data covalent, please. If you haven't watched my bonding series, please watch them. You'd be mad not to. Yeah, because you guys haven't been taught that trick, have you? To use the oxidation state to know how many bonds it's being made. Because you should see the questions that they ask you guys. Do you want to see some of it? Like, guys, you've no idea how hard this is. Look at the questions I did with my class. These are, the one, these are from exam papers. This is not me messing around. It asked you to do the dot and cross diagram for I205. You had to do that. You guys can't do that without knowing this oxidation trick. You've got to make sure you practice it. What you have to do here is recognize that this is I205. What's the oxidation state of the iodine? Plus five. Each one of them is making, so now we draw the circles around all of them. Each iodine is making five bonds. How's that possible in this circle picture? Right, well, what's gonna happen is each oxygen must make two bonds. We know that oxygen makes two bonds, unless there's a charge. If you have a charge, then one of the oxygens won't have two bonds, it'll only have one. And by the way, this is the next exam question where they gave you that. I need you guys to be watching my videos. If you haven't, you're mad. Please, please, please do it. No, because it doesn't usually, it doesn't matter. It'll, it, yeah, it won't matter. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between one oxygen and another. So yeah, yeah, I get you. Good question though, Oliver. So guys, please watch my lessons. Please, please. Like, I know it seems like an awful lot of time to do, but if you don't, you, you're going to be, you've got a mox coming up guys soon. Get on it. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why this is important is because the oxidation state of sulfur in sulfuric acid is what Marcellus talk me through it. What is the oxy state of sulfur? Talk me through it, Marcellus. Okay, it's the right answer. Can you talk me through it? All right, okay, O2 minus times four, eight minus in total, yep. I like it, H plus times by two, plus two, I like it, next. 
I like it. Don't forget to say that there's no overall charge, but I, I, I know you, you clearly know the process. I'm happy with it. Sulfur's in a plus six. Agreed? So since sulfur is in a plus six in sulfuric acid, what we realize we can now do is we can introduce the halide ions. So let's now list the halides. Halide ion reducing power. Reducing power. Let's list the halide ions. F minus, Cl minus, Br minus, and I minus. Right. I'm going to ask the three people in the class to have a think about a question. Prediction. Which halide ion will be the best reducing agent? I'll give you just 10 seconds just to think. Which halide ion will be the best reducing agent? Oliver, what's the definition of a reducing agent? Oh. Something that needed an electron. I like it. So these guys need to lose electrons. Who's going to lose electrons the best? I did. I did. Thank you. Well done, Puffy. Lovely change in name. Well done. So nice that you caught yourself instead of me having to catch you. That's great. So brilliant. So we know that the iodide, iodide, is going to be the most powerful, most powerful reducing agent we know that because we know that a reducing agent metals gain a reducing agent must lose electrons and we know that iodide is the largest fluorine fluoride yet yeah, two shells it's not going to want to lose that extra electron look at chloride three shells the extra electron, I'm going to zoom in and add some colors onto this. So two electrons there. This is the fluoride ion. Fluorine has spent its entire life trying to gain this electron. Chlorine has done the same thing and become chloride. But what we realize is it's gained that electron, but it's now further from the nucleus. If it's further from the nucleus, it's more easily lost. Bromide, two Three, four. Bromide is massive. Bromide's getting big now, guys. And then you get to iodide. Iodide's a beach whale, guys. Massive. Proper massive. Yeah. And which means it's outer. I, I, can't, I can't. I'm going to have to move it, aren't I? Yeah. It's huge. Absolutely massive. Yeah. We've got all of these shells underneath. It's going to lose that extra electron more easily than the others. So going to therefore be the most powerful reducing agent. Now we need to prove it. So, go on, question. Outer shell has eight electrons. You're specifically talking about bromide and iodide, right? And probably chloride as well. Okay, Oliver, run, grab your periodic table for me, please. Uh, grab that one there. Right, iodide. Oliver is going to blow the class's mind now. Oliver, can you please give me the full EC for iodide, please? Read it. Read it. Uh, 2S1. Uh, uh, sorry, hang on. Yeah, 1S2. 2S2. Cool. Uh, 6P2. What? No. 2P6. Next. Uh, you're, you're reading the table. You're not making this up, right? You're reading the table. Okay, cool. Yeah, three S two. Yeah, next. Cool. Next. Uh, two S four. Or Think about what you're saying, Oliver. Say that again to me. You said two S four. Four S two. Next. T ten, think about it, Oliver. Thank you. Stop getting it wrong. Fix it. Go. Thank you. No, ah. Five. Five. Thank you. Doing great. Keep going. Keep going. No, no, just keep reading the tables. 
We're not at iodide yet. Um, for for is that iodine or it's still not there yet? Oh, sorry, minus one. So five. Uh, like so, that would be iodine. But actually, the number you gave me was correct because it now gains one, being iodide. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Can I quickly ask the people in the class, thumbs up if you can do that? Yes? Brilliant. No thumbs up. You guys are rubbish. So, okay. So as long as you can do that and read the table, you realize you've got to be able to read the periodic table, guys. You don't do it any other method. Just read the table. So, Oliver, you're asking about the eight electrons in the outer shell. Yeah. yeah? Well, the eight electrons, of course, are coming from the five. It's the furthest out. Yeah, we know that the 5s fills up before the 4d, but they're still further out. The five, the fifth shell has got eight electrons in it, and it's therefore stable because you filled the 5s and the 5p. We have a stability structure. Cool, I like it. Right, yes? Yes, of course it is. But, oh, you, you should have been taught this. I taught this to you. Did I teach this to you in a time structure? I think you did. No. No? The reason being is you know the shape of the S subshell, yes? It's a sphere. Not a circle. It's a sphere. Yeah? And you know the shape of the P? The three Ps? Yeah, the dumbbells. Yeah? So you've got the three Ps. And then you, you, you don't need to know the D, but you see the D, right? It's an absolute mess. And what you realize is when you get to the D, so you get to the 3D, and the 4S going first, the reason being, even though the 4S is further out, it has a more stable shape, so it is lower in energy. Yes? So they're further out, but lower in energy because it's a beautiful sphere. Low energy sphere, rather than a messy, chaotic D. Yeah, good question. So, okay, going back to our halogens. So here's now the next bit. So these, we're now going to do a practical, right? Demo, and I will demo this for you guys as soon as my, the bottles are sorted and labeled because I can't tell what's what. I've got a problem with my laptop there. Um, so demo, and here's what we do. We take a boiling, we, we take a beaker. We actually do, I actually do this in a boiling tube, by the way, but let's take a beaker. And we're gonna add to the beaker a tiny, tiny quantity of conch sulfuric acid, and it is a liquid. What we're now gonna do is throw, <laughs> we are gonna throw, like, and I mean like, it's a quite a funny demo because basically you pick up a handful of salt and you just kind of go, Ugh, some of it's going to go in. <laughs> yeah. So, say again. Um, well, I'm going to do it in a boiling tube in a test tube rack. So some of it will go. It's not going to fall over. Yeah. But I don't want to, I don't want to be anywhere near this when it goes in. Yeah. We are going to throw in. Can I just point out the one I'm definitely not allowed to do, but you need to know is NaF. So we're going to throw in solid sodium fluoride. This is a white solid. A white solid. Why does it need to go in solid and not aqueous? Because we cannot have water anywhere near this. Otherwise, the acid will dissociate and the reaction will no longer happen. It must be solid. Right. We throw it in. And some of them land into it. And when the solid hits it, instantaneously, you get poof. Poof. White smoke. Observation. Observation. Observe. Sorry, I'll stop. Observation. Poof. I'm going to ask you right down. Poof. White, misty smoke, misty fumes, not smoke, it's fumes, white, misty fumes. Okay, so the question is, and by the way, this isn't just like, 
The reason why I have to throw it is because it is instant. It is boom. It is poof, instantaneous. And I don't want to be anywhere near this. Let's see why. Look at the equation. NaF plus conch sulfuric acid, and I get poof, HF gas and sodium hydrogen sulfate. I get HF gas. Poof. That's the poof right there. White, misty fumes. Right, just to tell you why I, I am not allowed to do this one in school, because HF is one of the most dangerous acids in the world. That acid there, the hilarious thing, it has a pH of give or take, has a pH of about four. It's not even a low pH, it's actually a weak acid. But the problem is, uh, by the way, weak acid means not fully ionized in water, which means it should be relatively safe. But the problem is the molecule is very, very small. It can pass straight through skin. What that means is it will pass straight through your skin, doesn't react with your skin, and then dissolves your bones from the inside out. It loves calcium and it will, it will eat your bones. By the way, you actually die from blood loss because the acid eats your bones, your bones become razor blades. When your bones then snap or you move around, your muscles get lacerated and your veins get cut on your razor blade bones that have been eaten by the acid, and then you bleed internally until you die. It is one of the most scary acids, and the only people who ever have this are dentists, because it's the only acid that can eat teeth. And they have a little bottle of it locked away in a very secure safe in their, in their practice. Uh, I've never actually seen HF myself, and I never, I never intend to. Very, 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 very dangerous acid. Um, during the extraction of fluorine, out of the 11 scientists put in charge of extracting fluorine, they had to make HF, and nine of them died. They're called the fluorine martyrs, and lots of them died from, from their HF um, fumes, then the fluorine, the nightmare. So now at this point, the reaction stops. Reaction now stops. What this means is this reaction is not redox. Why is it not redox, Marcellus? Oh, I like it. Answer, no loss or gain of electrons. I'm going to add another thing onto this as well. The answer they want on the mark scheme is no change in oxy state of anyone. No oxidation state changes. This is a bog standard displacement. Uh, actually, uh, technically you can class that as an acid base. There is proton transfer here. You call it displacement. That there is a displacement. Displacement. This is a true, dis uh, this is a displacement. Oh, my laptop has developed a fault. It's not good. Right. Let's now do the next one. We're now going to follow this up with HCl. Right. Let's do the HCl demo. Right. I'm going to take my concentrated sulfuric acid in the beaker. I'm going to throw into it sodium chloride solid. I throw it in and poof instantaneously hcl gas poof white misty fumes if you're wondering why you can see the misty fumes because hcl is a colorless gas so is hf you can see the misty fumes because it reacts with the water in the air to form droplets is why you see misty white fumes and we get nah SO4. Once again, not redox, and the reaction stops. Reaction stops. Not redox, not redox, but in fact, displacement. Is there any difference in the oxidation? No, no difference. You can't tell apart. What that means is this, this reaction 
will not show you the difference between reducing powers of fluoride and chloride. And that question has been asked. Explain why these observations do not allow you to show the difference in reducing power between chloride and fluoride. And you say, because the observations are the same, there is no change in oxidation state, therefore I do not know who's more powerful. Right, so same observation. So what that basically means, we can have a summary here, guys. The summary then says, I've only got 10 minutes left. F minus and Cl minus are poor reducing agents. And in this case, they do not act as one. These guys are poor reducing agents. Right, now we get to the interesting ones. Now we're gonna go for sodium bromide, right? I'm gonna take H2SO4 in a beaker. I'm gonna throw into it sodium bromide and I'm gonna run. First thing, can you guess what's gonna be seen, Oliver? Poof! White misty fumes of HBr gas. White misty fumes. We're always getting the displacement. The displacement happens instantaneously. But now it starts to bubble. And a colorless gas appears. A colorless acidic gas of SO2. A colorless acidic gas. We're seeing bubbles. We're seeing bubbles of colorless acidic SO2. So it goes, and you literally see these, it starts to kind of foam all over the place, but you're seeing this colorless gas. The misty fumes has dissipated. You get poof, and then just, and there's no more misty fumes anymore, just this colorless gas. And then the whole thing goes orange and then start spewing brown gas everywhere. Does anyone want to guess who I'm now making? Yes, well done. We now see the solution, the um, mixture turns orange, mixture turns orange as we form bromine water or bromine mixture in the, in the mix. And then we also now see, we see that one first followed by brown gas and brown the brown gas of br2 gas and then the reaction just continues to do that for the next five minutes no further reaction happens but it will just continue to do this until all the sulfur has been turned into so2 and all the bromide has been turned into bromine does that make sense It'll just continue to chew through it until these products are all done. By the way, we also get sodium hydrogen sulfate. Yeah, you realize that, guys, balancing this. Oh, dear, this is going to become messy. Now, at this point, guys, I need to point something out. This one here, this one here is the reduction product. Whoops. This one here is the reduction product. Why? Because we've gone from, we've gone from sulfuric acid plus six to SO2 plus four. It's been reduced in oxidation state. The bromine, on the other hand, the bromine is the oxidation product. Oxidation product, because we're going from Br minus up to Br2. Does that make sense? And this is going from minus one, minus one to zero. Is everyone okay with that? Right, last one, last one. And we're done for today's lesson. So one more experiment to go. We're now gonna take conch sulfuric acid in a beaker. I'm gonna stand way back and I'm gonna throw in Sodium iodide, our predicted most powerful reducing agent, the iodide ion. We're going to throw it in. And what do we see, please, uh, Winkit? Straight off the bat, what do I see? 
Well done. Poof. Hey, Jai. We're going to make hydrogen, I, hydro iodic. It's actually, no, it's hydrogen iodide, technically, because it's a gas. It's not an acid. If it was in aqueous, it'd be hydro iodic acid. Isn't that cool name? Right. Oh, yes, absolutely, of course. White misty fumes. Right. Guess what I'm now going to see? A colorless acidic gas appears of SO2. We now get bubbles of a colorless acidic gas, acid gas. Now, what do we now see? We now see the whole thing turning, uh, turning brown. Guess what I'm now seeing? Iodine and purple vapor. We start to see the solution starts to turn brown and purple vapor. Oh, sorry, hang on a sec. No, 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 gotta be careful here. I, yeah, we start to see three observations. The solution starts to colorize and turn brown. Brown solution appears and a black solid. I'm gonna actually highlight the black solid because that's how iodine solid starts to appear. Star that guy, much more common observation in the questions. But then we also tend to see purple vapor. Everything, iodine starts spewing out everywhere, but it's not done. All of a sudden, yellow crystals start to form. What am I now getting? Yellow solid? Sulfur. The, the sulfur is now being produced as a solid. And we're going to see a yellow, yellow crystals forming. Yellow crystals or solid form. Solid form. But it's not finished there either. At this point, you get a terrible, terrible bad egg smell of H2S. Bad egg smell. Bad egg smell of hydrogen sulfide, small. Bad egg smell. Can I just point out that H2S is one is almost as toxic as cyanide. Terrible. To, I can do that demo in school, but I have to do it in the fume cupboard. Guys, that brings us to, and by the way, the reduction products. Look how many we now have. Reduction product, reduction product, reduction product. All of these are reduction products, but we have one oxidation product of iodine oxy product i will see you guys next lesson of course i can how is it in three states because the problem is it, the, 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 the reaction is getting hot because of the solid iodine it starts to it starts dissolving into the con sulfuric acid it starts to turn brown but then the problem is it's not very soluble in the con sulfuric acid so it then starts to precipitate out as a solid it's a great question, Wicked. Where did the um, sodium come from? Oh, you also get sodium hydrogen sulfate as a byproduct, and now you understand you try and balance this equation. And by the way, and they asked it, they did it. Um, there it was. If you want to have a go at balancing that equation, please do. I will leave that. I'll end my YouTube video there. <clears throat> I'll bring that back to here. Guys, go have a great rest of your day. I hope you found it useful. I'll see you all soon. Bye now.